Thank you for joining AMO and our partner 4S for today's webinar. My name is Nicholas Suter. I'm a research advisor with AMO and LES, uh, responsible for identifying potential partnerships with preferred vendors uh, that can work collaboratively with the, with the membership. Some of you might already be familiar with the partnership that we have with 4S Occupational Health and Safety Advisory, but for those of you who are not, just some brief background. AMO is interested in engaging with a partner that could offer members a scalable and comprehensive occupational health and safety management program. We wanted to identify a partner that could offer members the tools to help you better manage health and safety requirements in the workplace as mandated by provincial legislation. So last spring, after consulting with several members that use their services and products, we formally announced our partnership with 4S. They will be offering health and safety training and consulting services, including a comprehensive online management system uh, to our members at an exclusive price. Uh, Adrian will go into further detail about the specific 4S offerings, but I just want to say that these tools will help you build and manage health and safety programs, no matter the size of your municipality. And that was important criteria for us uh, when we selected 4S as our preferred occupational health and safety management program provider. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Adrian Varau. He's the key accounts manager with 4S. And Adrian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nicholas. Welcome, everyone. So I'll do a quick introduction. Uh, Nicholas already did an introduction of 4S, but I'll just, get, I'll just elaborate a bit more about who we are and what we do. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the where are we now, the current state of the municipal sector and some of the uh, uh, occupational health and safety trends in the, within the sector. We'll also do a brief overview of some responsibilities and compliance requirements in Ontario for occupational health and safety. Uh, I'll go over the term due diligence and how do you prove it. Um, I think it's important for everyone to know this. Uh, again, uh, for those of you that may be not too familiar with health and safety, in Ontario. I think it's just a good overview to start. And then I'm going to share with you three cases. Uh, one is Ontario based, but a couple of, um, from uh, different provinces in Canada. And then I'll, uh, it will be a great segue into getting into uh, our services and solutions and how Forest can support you in building your health and safety program. And we'll do a review of uh, our special offerings and then next steps and action items. So, who is Forest and how do we help AMO members? We have a three pillar approach that you see on the screen to our service delivery model, which I'll cover in more detail in the second half of the webinar. We offer consulting support to our clients in the forms of various solutions, such as gap analysis or compliance reviews of your program, uh, job safety analysis or hazard assessments, which is the process of determining your hazards in your workplace, uh, assessing them and coming up with the uh, recommendations for controls. Uh, policy and procedure development that would be affiliated or associated with those gaps. And then um, safe operating procedure development is, is, those are just a few of the things that we offer through our consulting support. Uh, I just want to take a moment. I, I may uh, get into uh, three acronyms I may use. So I just want to let you know, if I do use the term OHS, that refers to occupational health and safety. Uh, JSA or job safety analysis. And uh, SOPs are, are safe operating procedures. I'll try my best not to use those, but if I do jump into that, I apologize. And hopefully, I um, just wanted to describe what those meant. Um, we're also an approved provider for Joint Health Safety Committee certification training and working at heights, as well as deliver other various leadership in class training that can be customized to suit your needs. Uh, thirdly, we have an online health and safety management system, which does include over 80 online courses that can be offered in an unlimited basis as part of our subscription service to For SafeCon. This proprietary online management system will be reviewed in more detail later, but as I will be able to indicate to you how our system can get you into compliance and keep you in compliance while saving you the administrative burden that can come with managing health and safety and the time you'll save by leveraging our online system. So again, what makes us unique and a proud partner of AMO is our ability to kind of deliver in all three realms. Just the current state of the municipal government sector. Um, so what I've what I've gathered is there's a reduced funding by the provincial government. Obviously, when the Ford government came in place, uh, there was a uh, the intent to reduce costs. So uh, that comes with the reduced funding and proposed uh, streamlining of certain service models. This has caused some strain and anguish on various departments, particularly public health, conserve, conservation authorities, and paramedics, ambulance, emergency services. 
I know this may not uh, impact you as much as perhaps maybe larger municipalities, but uh, uh, it's just something I've noted. Um, you're also dealing with budget constraints and reduced staffing. Uh, we've also seen a growth in occupational and non-occupational claims, as well as changes in complex return to work plans with the allowance of chronic mental health claims. So for, the, for you, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, uh, WSIB a couple years ago has started to accept chron chronic mental health claims, especially with the, uh, uh, the growth of mental health concerns across all workplaces globally. Um, and this within Ontario, has resulted in some claims and um, particularly we're seeing the municipal sector uh, see some of these pop up. There is some optimism though. Um, there is continued provincial investment to transit infrastructure as well as rural municipalities and I'm referring to in this case particularly to the municipal modernization program which I do have a couple of municipalities that are trying to leverage this for part of our services uh, for our online system. And of course, there's opportunities to leverage technology to create efficiencies in operations and administration. So this is uh, some statistics I've gathered from WSIB. These are uh, 2018, it's a, the allowed lost time injury trends. As you can see on the top, there are scheduled two employers, which would encompass majority, if not all, uh, well, not, sorry, not all, but a majority of, of, of uh, municipal municipalities. And you can see there's quite a significant uh, jump from number three to one in this case. Services is up there, but again, Schedule Two employers bring one, uh, it's a cost of one point seven four billion dollars. Now you may say that's because of the number of staff or employees that are uh, employed in municipalities. However, if you look at the next slide, uh, this is looking at lost time injury rates from 2016 to 2019, and again, Schedule Two employers are at the top of the list. So this really does put a, a, a target on Schedule 2 employers in the eyes of WSIB and Ministry of Labor when they consider enforcement initiatives and, and other uh, like blitzes and action plans. So um, it's something for you to, to consider. Uh, lost time injury rate, in case you're wondering what that is, it's just the number of allowed lost time claims and the total number of people employed to show the number of lost time claims per 100 employees. So again, this is just a, a it's a more fair rate or statistic to share that kind of levels of playing field across all sectors. So your responsibility is for safety. And it's important to understand that as an employer, you have a primary workplace responsibility to ensure that a safety program is in place as well as be able to demonstrate that such a program is working effectively. And what happens in a lot of workplaces is that you can delegate certain health and safety responsibilities downwards within, within your organization but you can never ever delegate accountability for health and safety. As, a, as accountability increases, as the level of authority increases. So it's something uh, for, for those of you that are, if we have CAO or council members on, on the uh, webinar, it's just to be, be aware that, that it's not something that you can kind of pass on to another individual. There are also expectations from your community to be a health and safety leader. So you should lead by example and demonstrate safety excellence. Um, I'm not going to bore you with too much statistic, uh, data here from the Health and Safety Act, but I did want to kind of touch upon some of the responsibilities that fall under the three primary workplaces, workplace parties defined in the Ontario Health and Safety Acts. So for example, as the employer, you need to take all reasonable precautions to ensure that you have done everything to keep your workplace safe. This is also referred to as a general duty clause, which means that even though you may be compliant with the Health and Safety Act, you've taken care of everything that you've noticed in the Act, it does not mean that you have concluded your responsibilities. So for example, you may need to inform and instruct your supervisors and workers on what hazards exist in your workplace, as well as how to eliminate or minimize exposure to such hazards. Furthermore, you need to appoint competent supervisors as per the act, which means they need to be familiar with their duties under the act, as well as be informed on what that workplace hazards are and how to mitigate risk to these hazards, as they need to be able to communicate that to their own staff. So, just take a moment to pause and think about your workplace right now and, and would you feel that you're comfortable that you identified all your hazards and that you communicated that to your supervisors and to other workers. Identifying all hazards in your workplace can take a lot of time and it requires a certain skill set. It could be an arduous task so you need to know how, how you're going to assess these hazards, control them, and then determine a way of how you're going to 
inform, instruct, and train all your staff on these, on these control plans. This can be quite a project when using traditional communication, training, and archiving methods, such as in-person training, and attempting to document all training and communication records as, as hard copies. So some of you at your workplace, you may have a, a, number, of, uh, a number of locations that kind of fall under your realm. Uh, you maybe got uh, employees distributed across your municipality. Uh, some, my experience is that sometimes there could be a certain health and your health and safety program could be uh, pieces here and pieces there, and that could be a challenge for you, especially if you're trying to uh, prove due diligence or trying to review your programs. So it's it's best in today's day, today's world is to leverage technology and online training. I'm not going to go over this slide in great detail. Just want to provide you a moment of plan to glance through these compliance requirements. But I did want to point out some of the compliance requirements in Ontario for those that are new to, to health and safety. Forest does offer an online training compliance bundle that can assist you with a number of these requirements at an affordable price of $45 per person. And that's a special rate for AMO members. What is due diligence? Due diligence it means that employers shall take all reasonable precautions under the circumstances to prevent injuries or accidents in the workplace. Moreover, this duty also applies to situations that the Occupational Health and Safety Act legislation has not addressed elsewhere. So in summary, this means doing everything reasonable to protect your staff is very crucial for legal defense in circumstances where you may be prosecuted under the Health and Safety Act. It's kind of a catch-all clause that uh, enforcement can say, okay, you, don't, you didn't necessarily contravene with certain parts of the Act or regulations, However, they'll pull out this clause and say, you should have still known to have this kind of control measurement in place, or you should have known about these hazards. It's typical in most circumstances with uh, litigation matters that they say, you're innocent until proven guilty. But in health and safety, it's the exact opposite. You're guilty until proven innocent. And that's the importance of due diligence. It cannot be assumed, it has to be communicated. Documented, monitored, and managed. This can be quite a task to manage, if your documented program and training records are located as hard copies throughout your, your municipality or even on various hard drives or servers. So it's important to keep this well organized and accessible, ideally in one location, to monitor and manage. So why is due diligence critical? Well, here's three good reasons. Increased fines. Fines increased just recently through the Health and Safety Act. So the maximum penalties for each conviction is, for individuals, it could be up to $100,000 fine per offense or, and or up to 12 months imprisonment. For corporations, it could be up to $1.5 million per, per offense. There's potential criminal liability. Amendments to the Criminal Code in 2004 under Bill C-45 allows for anyone who fails to meet Occupational health and safety duties can now be charged with criminal negligence. Okay. And there's increased individual liability. So increased supervisory prosecutions and penalties. There's been fewer charges being withdrawn against individuals and jail terms are being sought for individuals. So I want to share uh, three, three cases with you. So this one, I've just stated in Ontario municipality. I don't think it's important to know who. It is an AMO member. So. Uh, this, in this case, the municipality is fined fifty thousand dollars after workers exposed to asbestos. So, eight workers working on a construction project at uh, at the region's watering water pumping station. And the project involved the removal of existing equipment, followed by the installation of new electrical and instrumentation equipment in the wells. The employer failed to advise the workers and their supervisors of the presence of asbestos-containing materials in the building prior to the commencement of the construction work. So, they started to drill holes in, into the the foundation, and that's where they found the asbestos and the walls. The workers were not wearing the required PPE, and then the employer pleaded guilty to, fill, to failing to provide a worker with the required information about materials that are asbestos containing. In this case, it was wonderful that the municipality actually did proceed and they went through and got an assessment done by a third party provider uh, the, to check for designated substances. So they had this report in hand. However, they didn't go through the process of actually communicating it to those staff affected. What would make sense is a means for staff to be easily informed of the hazards in their specific workplace. So again, I want to start by putting that uh, idea in your head about the consideration of a risk registry for each department or location that an employee can easily look up, note, and then ensure that proper notification 
and related training could be assigned to impact the staff, as well as assign the review of any applicable safe operating procedures to the impacted workers and ensure you keep a record of acknowledgement of this review. So what I mean by that is um, if they would have posted this report and if they, you know, they identify this area as having a, a asbestos, then what they should be doing is um, assigning to those individuals impacted or affected by this, uh, their policies and procedures to review regarding asbestos, a training on asbestos awareness, and then uh, needing that record of training that they've received that training as well as acknowledgement that they've read the policies and procedures associated with it. It's important to keep that paper trail. The next case is from the city of Edmonton. And in this case, it was they're fined $325,000 for a worker's 2016 tunneling death. So the tunnel was being dug with a tunnel boring machine and a sewer shaft, and the worker went to reposition a conveyor belt system, but it moved unexpectedly and the worker's head was pinned between the conveyor and the wall. The employer failed to provide workers with formal training on how to move the conveyor, and the city did not have the correct operation and maintenance manual for the machine at the time of the incident. So since then, the, the city has launched a general safety initiative to ex examine three distinct areas, people, processes, and technology, which basically in a nutshell is what's done when when you should be done when you proceed with a job safety analysis or a hazard assessment. So again, this is another example where there's a need to ensure that proper protocols and procedures are in place to do a task safely, while ensuring that all staff affected by the task in the workplace are pre-assigned appropriate hazard specific training related to the work as well as are informed of appropriate SOPs. Lastly, this may be a case that's familiar to everyone, is the uh, happened in Fernie, BC. And it's the Fernie Arena tragedy. So, um, although there has been no fines as of yet, they're still considering enforcement action in BC. But on October 17, 2017, three men died following an ammonia leak at an ice rink in Fernie. Two of the men were city of Fernie employees. It was found that the gas seeped out of a hole in the curling rink chiller, which was past its life expectancy. So again, with a proper preventative maintenance program, they would have determined that this chiller was not, shouldn't have been in service. Investigation concluded that the current OHS system did not mitigate risk to workers. And incident response measures were not taken and there was corrosion on the chiller tubes. There's eight provincial violations occurred, including failing to conduct regular inspections of the workplace to prevent unsafe working conditions and failing to develop and implement an exposure control plan for ammonia in the workplace. So again, a case of needing to know your hazards, assess them, and then recognize how to control them and come up with a control plan. It's also very important to establish a mindset of continuously evaluating your safety program and improving them on an ongoing basis. So another thing for you to consider is how often have you reviewed your entire health and safety program? When was the last time you did such an audit? These are again, important measures to take to prove due diligence and to keep up to, up to date with your health and safety program. The act of regular workplace inspections and preventive maintenance could have mitigated this from happening. For those of you that are interested in uh, knowing more about this case, um, there's actually on the WorkSafe BC website, you can uh, search it and there's actually a 74 page investigation report that's been redacted that you can uh, read on your own. So how can you prove due diligence? Here's just the various ways that you can do that. You can do hazard assessment of all your tasks, getting to know your hazards, and determining control plans, having policies and procedures and developing policies and procedures and reviewing them and communicating them to your staff, as well as if you were ever asked, you'd wanna show your last audit of your entire program and what the frequency of those audits are. Inspections are vital. You need to do regular monthly workplace inspections. And that's a, also a requirement under the Health and Safety Act. And that's just by your committee, but we always encourage having a managers and supervisors do it more frequently. Preparation tracking of corrective action plan. So from those inspections, you're gonna come up with some issues that need to be addressed. So how are you doing that currently? And how are you tracking that, right? And this could be, this could be a challenge as well. If you're just following a paper trail. Pre-use inspections, of course this is important for any kind of equipment you're using to make sure that it's, it's working properly and you can use it safely. And then preventative maintenance records. Training management, you wanna just make sure everyone has the mandatory uh, compliance training completed and hazard specific training for their, for their job positions and their, and their tasks. 
formal site safety orientation record management. So I know that this, um, you may have a general orientation program for the entire municipality, but the next question would be, do you have something that's very specific to certain areas of where you provide services to the, to the public? And of course, supervisor and senior management training, so this could be competency training. So what I'd like to get into is how 4S services can help you with your program and, and proving due diligence. So we can assist you with mitigating risks, you know, coming up with a defense for, for uh, due diligence, enhancing your decision making. Uh, momentarily, I'll show you our system and how it can help you, uh, you know, with analytics and coming up with the data quickly. Uh, and of course, consulting support. We can also help you with reducing costs. Through our services, we can help you avoid WSIB premium increases, avoid ministry fines, reduce accident investigation costs, and lower downtime. And of course, the, the end goal should always be healthy workers. You want, you want to provide them a health and safe workplace. And as you know, improves employee morale, higher productivity, and lower risks of injuries and illnesses. So this diagram simply illustrates what I discussed earlier in the webinar about the three pillar customer centric approach that we provide and the three delivery streams. It's always a focus on the client. So with consulting, and you'll see that there's kind of a trend here of how we, how we typically, if we were to provide you a full health and safety program implementation, this is how we do it. So our team consists of experienced health and safety consultants with years of experience developing, implementing, executing, and even auditing health and safety programs. We have, a credit, we have a, a certified auditors in-house that have audited accredited programs such as CORE and ISO 45000. And the other programs too, such as the, uh, the old uh, work well audit from WSIB, and as well as we'll have the capabilities to do the new MOL accreditation program that was announced in November. Through our consulting services is where we can really get to know where your organization stands. And when it comes to health and safety compliance and excellence, we typically come into an organization and complete a gap analysis. So what we want to do is take a look at what your current state is. You know, where are you at? What are your gaps in meeting compliance first and foremost, and then addressing hazards. Through the use of uh, job safety analysis or hazard assessments is where we begin to identify your hazards, begin to record and archive your risk registry. This is a very important service that we offer, given that many of you are managing various types of workplaces and public service delivery mechanisms in place. So. Uh, just from what I've gathered from speaking to a number of you, I know that some municipalities oversee arenas, marinas, waste facilities, snow removal, libraries, public works, golf courses, ski resorts, parks, emergency services, water and wastewater operations, household hazardous waste depots and offices. So it's, um, of course, it's good. I, I'm not surprised it's a challenge for you when you've got so many types of different um, services and workplaces that you're that you have in existence and trying to determine which one to tackle first with respect to doing a hazard assessment and how do you communicate that to that to those certain groups however once you know your hazards is where you can begin to develop relevant policies procedures to to mitigate to for those control plans as well as the, as the SOPs that are associated with them as you can learn particularly from the Edmonton case study that I showed it's important for these to be work and process specific. Our training can simply put is, once we've got your risk registry in place, what we do is we can upload that into our uh, 4SafeCom system, and now we can start to leverage the e-learning library that's accessible to you. Our hazard specific online training is assigned to your affected staff for each hazard that exists along with any high risk uh, hazard classroom training that is required, such as working at heights, confined space, or heavy equipment training. So of course we strive to use online capabilities as much as possible. There are certain courses that do require you to have more hands-on classroom training that we do offer. But again, once, you've done, once we've identified a hazard for you, we upload the results of that JSA. We will uh, you know, develop a policy procedure surrounding that, the SOPs, and then our system has the capabilities of assigning that to your certain departments and your workers. So in turn, what they're able to do is review all the applicable policies or documentation as well as you'll be able to assign some of our online training courses to help assist with the uh, with uh, the hazard specific training that's required for that and that's all recorded on our system as well as the acknowledgement of reading those documentations 
finally, for SafeCom, you know, I'll be showing you some features, uh, specific features of the system, but this is to ensure that your continuous effective management of your program. And we provide this training to show you how all the various features of the of Forsafe Comp can assist you in effectively maintaining and managing your program in a succinct and pro pragmatic manner that reduces administrative costs, lost time when you're all this time you're spending locating or, arch or archiving tasks and training records, especially at multiple sites or locations, and then also trying to assign certain tasks to personnel. The system has the capabilities, like I said, of uploading all this information. We work in the back. We work in the back end and work with you to determine who needs what training and who needs to who needs to be aware of what SOPs and policies and procedures. So our methodology: the first big step is simple. As I mentioned, we need to understand your business operations. Part of our service delivery with a full implement, implementation program is we will work on a business process flow diagram, just like the one that's being shown here. So through this, it allows you to have a visual of each of your work processes while also identifying the risks associated with various tasks for the process. So obviously visual, it's gonna help you understand more about that process and what we've identified as hazards throughout that certain task or process. The collaboration of these processes and hazard assessments results in the building blocks for your customized program to manage your risks. Now I'll introduce you to our Forsafe Comp safety management system. Your entire program would be online where you can then assign the review of specific policies, procedures, and SOPs. And this, and also it has the capabilities of them acknowledging that they've read that. So um, a lot of traditional ways, what you'll do is you'll, uh, what I'm aware of, you'll, you'll, provide a, uh, you'll provide a policy to someone and say, read it, make sure you're familiar with it. And what happens in a lot of cases is that you just go away assuming that, that person has read it and you have no record that shows that they've acknowledged that they've read that. So our system has the capabilities where once they've read it, you just, it's a simple press of a button that says acknowledgement, and now you've got a record, it's timestamped of when they've, when they've read that and uh, what specific policy or procedure they've read. This is a great way to, to ensure that you're duly diligent. This is where we start to uh, bring the program alive through the integration with business activities. So this next slide gives you a good, overview of all the features of our system. And notice I say online management system, not online training system. This is more, this is more than just about doing training, it's about managing your program. And it's got various features that will assist you in, in ensuring that you're taking all the steps with regards to inspections, accident investigations, incident reporting, uh, requirements for meetings for your Joint Health Safety Committee, and so on. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time today to show you a demo, but I would always encourage any of you to reach out to me afterwards to schedule a one hour demo of the system that we can do at your workplace. If you are close by and if you're not, we can, we've, I've also done a number of these remotely. So just to dig in to some of the features, the first one being training management. And this is where you would manage your training program as an administrator. You can run a training matrix that shows you a report of who needs what training based on job position and tasks. You've done your job hazard analysis. You identify what hazards uh, are each person is exposed to. We implement that, we put that in the system, and then we start to assign their training requirements. These reports can be customized for the various users, and we can set this up for you on the back end initially, as well as set up a frequency in which you may want to share such reports. So once the customized reports are done, you can let us know what you want to see in these reports. And as you can see, there's, there, there'll be a legend that tells you what's been completed, what's expired, uh, what, what is still incomplete. This is a great way for you to know uh, status of, of where you're at and who needs to be followed up with, right? And these reports can be sent to individuals that you can, we can simply assign into the, into the program so they get, let's say, for example, a monthly matrix report to review. In the bottom left, I wanna show you what's, what is a QR scan code card. And these are available for use as well. So consider the uh, circumstances where you may have staff that are isolated, they're on the road, or they work at a separate building. And they have a, uh, someone from, the, let's say the Ministry of Labor come by, an enforcement, and they're asking a request of, of certain training or record. Maybe it's, for example, working in confined space or working on heights. What they're now able to do is they can take their phone, scan this card, and all the records of, of the training that they've completed on our system or all the policy procedures that they've reviewed will come up and, and be visible to the uh, to the inspector. 
again, quick access, leveraging technology, and um, ensuring due diligence. Next, we have inspection features, of course, in our system. Uh, we have ones that are specific to workplace inspection reports. So when you think of your workplace inspections, we don't just provide you one that's for a general workplace or an office. We provide you things that are customized based on your gap analysis and assessment needs. So this could be, for example, we have one for arenas. We can develop one for, you know, maybe it's your shop, your garage shop, where you do a lot of repairs to your equipment. It could be of any kind of workplace that you've got that existed within your municipality. We also do pre-use inspection reports, which is what we're showing up here right now with a forklift. Again, we'll work with you to develop ones for, for example, like an ice resurfer, surfacer, excuse me, snow plows, front end loaders, et cetera. Any heavy equipment you have, we will develop those with you. So you've got a pre-use inspection in place. And you can see that with our system, it's a cloud-based system. And uh, you can easily use uh, phones or tablets to access these reports. So in the left-hand side, you'll see an actual picture of a forklift with a tablet that's being used to do an inspection. In this case, you can easily complete the form online, sign off by just using a simple finger to put in your signature or your, or your initials, press submit, and then the completed inspection is archived and shared with whomever is set up on the back end to receive a notification. So if you've got a worker doing, uh, let's say, a workplace inspection, maybe it's a JHSC member, they fill it out. You know, they can also, this also has the capability of taking pictures, as you can see on the right-hand side. Maybe it's a picture of their wanting to show something very specific. In this case, it's a propane tank, right? This is all done through our system. And once they press submit, it goes to whomever you want it to go to. So if it's a reporting supervisor, they'll take a look at it, review it. If there's any gaps or infractions, then what they can do is through the system, they can now assign a to-do item or task to someone to fix that issue. Again, this is all trackable. And it's all quick and responsive, real time. So corrective actions tracking. So this is what I meant by when I was mentioning that there could be to-do items. This could be for training, this could be for review of policies, or it could be for, for, for fixing items. So um, it really kind of has, maybe some of you have got a work order process in place at your, at your municipality. This would work similarly to that. So any required action items can be assigned to an individual by a supervisor or manager. And then everything, like I said, is recorded in an archive. And there's no need to keep paper-based copies or work of, worry about wasting time looking for forms or recording, or recording progress. All progress can be recorded now online with our system and timestamps. And you can also do periodic status reports with this. So, so for example, if someone will see it and it will come in their inbox, let's say that they've, they've been assigned a to-do item and they'll get a weekly uh, notice or alert to, to do that, to get that result until they press, until they stay, change the status to complete. And that's all done online. Next is our incident reporting and analysis. So our system allows you to fill out accident reports and investigation forms online. It also has great, amazing dashboards, and this is one that shows, uh, you know, doing an analysis with the injuries by type as well as injuries by body part in this case. It allows you to make quick and easy decisions to determine what objectives or actions need to be set. So you can take a look at these, come up with some true action items on how you want to address workplace injuries at your municipality and act on them quickly with, with uh, analytics to, back, to support you with that. The feature of the online report online report also is assist you in easily keeping track of the investigation and recommendations that come from it. So what we provide you is an online accident incident reporting form that will gather all the, all, all, the, all the information details you need for the incident, as well as there's an investigation form, which would be used to uh, investigate the accident and determine what the root causes are and what could be the symptoms of why it occurred. Again, these reports can be filled out and signatures can be done online and distributed online discreetly to only those that are required or authorized to review it and it makes privacy easier to ensure another nice feature is if you've got to submit a form 7 to wsib we have that in the system where it pre-populates based on your incident and accident form which makes it a lot easier and faster for you to produce the, the form 7 in a pdf version for you to now download and email to the wsib lastly what i want to show you is our preventative maintenance program so I think this is, this is of utmost importance to municipalities in today's day and age. 
This is where you can go online and see the entire PM schedule for all of your equipment across all your locations from vehicle lifts, ice making and ice surface machines, chair lifts, heavy equipment, you name it. So we would help you in, in determining what, you know, looking through your owner's manuals, looking through your past practices, we would upload all your items and identify what are the, what's the PM that needs to be done on all these items. Now you, now you can easily go into the system and determine what's, what's due and what's not. What's overdue is more importantly. Our, our system allows you to do this effectively and efficiently. And you, now you can set up assigning responsibilities of certain individuals as well. So people will know which items they need to do maintenance on and at what time. Again, reminder alerts can be set up to go into their inboxes prior to due date. More, more importantly, an alert will go when a task is overdue. And then another key part of our system, unfortunately I don't have a slide with me today, is about our contractor management. So some of you, a number of you probably have a lot of contractor vendors that come in to do various services for you. Our system has the capabilities where you could, uh, we basically upload the names and the contact information, and we'd work with you on a communication, and then we'd send out that communication to uh, your contract and contractors and vendors to say, okay, you're working with such and such municipality, we need you to upload your clearance certificate, your, your training records, your documentation, et cetera. This would be all kept in the, in the system. And what's more important is our process does, allows you to kind of sit behind the scenes as we'll work with them directly and get them to upload things with the proper communication established by, by us jointly. Finally, I wanted to show the special offers. These are available to all AMO members. You can see the pricing there for various training services and online courses. Um, as you see at the bottom, we, we do special discounted pricing for customized occupational health and safety consulting services of 15%. So a lot of these pricing has been uh, agreed upon through our, through our partnership with AMO and is available to all AMO members. The only thing I must note is if you are interested in, in the classroom training, uh, for those outside of GTA, there may be a cost associated with travel or meals. Um, what we do in these cases, we do try our best to minimize this through coordination of services with you or through other neighboring clients. So again, I would still don't hesitate to reach out to us regardless of where you're located. Uh, it could be that the neighboring municipality is looking for the same type of training and then we can work on something with you. Lastly, I want to also, I want to go over a new program with the Workplace Safety Insurance Board and it's a, uh, it's called the Health and Safety Excellence Program. Uh, we've also we are an approved provider, a WSIB, excuse me, approved provider for, for this health and safety excellence program. And we've actually branded our own program called For Safety Excellence. I won't be able to go over this in detail today. However, uh, I'd be happy to send you links to the WSIB website, as well as the links to our site, if you want to learn more about it. Basically, this is the only incentive-based program that now exists through WSIB. But unfortunately, for those of you that are uh, scheduled two employers, you do not are eligible for a rebate. But that said, there's still a lot of non-financial benefits to this program. So what are these? You can receive recognition badges to use on your website, email signature or, or advertisements to show others your commitment to workplace health and safety. Your badges will also show up on your business profile when people search for safety stats. You can add this to your corporate social responsibility profile or your annual reports and improve your brand and become a health and safety ambassador and role model in your community. So in a lot of cases, this could be what, you know, if you're looking to hire seasonal help, especially students, this would be a great way to, to showcase to parents that, you know what, your, your, your son or daughter is coming to a place where we take health and safety serious and we're part of a program. This basically is a journey through, and it doesn't matter where you are through your journey to excellence, whether you're a beginner or whether you're more advanced, this was still has the benefits, as I mentioned, of being recognized for what you're doing in the area of health and safety. And it's an area that WSIB is really um, focused on is getting scheduled two employers to sign up with the program. Now with our program, the For Safety Excellence, what we provide as part of the service is continual coaching and mentoring. Okay, so we hold your hand through the entire process. And basically what it does, what, what, to start off, you have to do an online assessment. And we assist you through that assessment. So uh, it, although it's a requirement, it's just, it's just a tool. And it will come up with some recommended topics of what you can do. You can choose up to five topics per year. Also, you can also you can go from one to five, excuse me. So you don't even have to do five topics. If you think you can only manage three, that's fine. 
through myself, I would speak with you and kind of determine what are the best topics that kind of align with what you're already trying to do with your health and safety program. And then I approve that plan and you'd have, with, you'd have to complete those topics within a year. To support you along the way, we typically do in-person meetings. However, obviously with the uh, AMO members, everyone's located all across Ontario, we would do virtual group meetings. So similar process with the webinar, uh, we we exercise and we do four four meetings just to ensure that we uh, support you along your along the way, you know, provide you some some indicators of where you should be within the program, and um, you know, provide you some valuable advice on what needs to be done next. Okay. Finally, at the very end, we would give you feedback on your validation documentation prior to submission to WSIP. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at this. So they don't call it an audit; they call it a validation. And we would look to see what needs to be submitted so that you get uh, uh, you have the successful completion of that topic and everything gets approved. Even if by chance we miss something, you'll still have 60 days to, to uh, resolve the gaps and then resubmit to the WSIB. And finally, there'd be administrative support with the program. So that said, I do want to do a special offer to those that are on the webinar today. We're calling it an AMO safety compliance package and you get 20% off our regular pricing for the four SafeCom health and safety training and management system, access to our system. We'd also offer four complimentary virtual group meetings. So again, this kind of nicely aligns with our four step program. And the topics, what we would do is we'd have you kind of take you on a journey. One would be covering health hazard assessment. Meeting two would be looking at your training compliance, getting you to be compliant. Thirdly, reviewing your policies and procedures. And then fourth would be a year on self-assessment. The reason we're offering this is that we understand, albeit a lot of our discussion today is about us being able to provide all our consulting and training services to you. I can appreciate, we can appreciate, excuse me, that it may be a challenge based on your, uh, your location to do it in a feasible manner. So through this process, we'll help you to become a little bit more reliant. Even if it's a starting point, at least it's better than nothing. Also with this package, we would offer, uh, allow you to register into the uh, health, our four set program at a vastly reduced price of $350, which usually is priced at $1,000. This offer does expire March 13th, so please let me know if you're interested sooner than later. So that concludes our presentation. We just wanted to let you know that we've touched a number of lives as a 4S. We've been around for 15 years. We've had over a half a million users and we've touched upon four, over 500 organizations. And as you can see, there's some there that are municipalities, such as the city of Kingston and the city of Belleville, that we're proud to say we worked with actively. We're still working with. That concludes the presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Adrian, and uh, thanks to everyone for, uh, for listening. Um, there is an opportunity now to, to ask questions to Adrian. Again, if you can just send them through that Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, that would be, that would be very helpful. Um, I don't see any right now, but Adrian, I'll, I'll start with a few questions for you um, just to get things going. In terms of the online training modules, can they be tailored to specific situations in local municipalities, or is it more of a generic uh, training module? No, uh, our, our online training, it, we do have standardized courses. However, we can do a customized version of, of many of them uh, for municipalities. Um, We've also, we've even done some that are truly like, it's just a unique type of circumstance where we can actually do a, a hazard specific training module. So we've, we've done it for municipalities and we've done it for a number of our larger clients. Uh, second question is regarding the For Safe Calm, the online program, uh, specifically about data and data privacy. The data that's generated from there, um, I would assume those backups are in, or the backups on servers are in, uh, hosted in Canada? Yes, they are hosted in Canada. Uh, and they're also recorded, they're also hosted offsite, which is another security feature. So there, and there's no concerns, and we're working with the Canadian company with that. So in case there's ever some kind of, um, how could I say, any kind of changes with the, our harmonious relationship with the U.S. or there's some some issues there. You don't have to worry about uh, loss of privacy. Okay, uh, Nicholas, uh, I'd like to jump into this one and uh, just like let you know that uh, the best part is the data remains in Canada. It doesn't cross the Canadian shores. So uh, the bottom line is we store it in clouds and um, it's highly secure. 
And in, in terms of the data ownership, so the data that's generated from the program, um, that is owned by the municipality, and I would assume that would be in your terms and conditions, correct? That is very much correct, uh, but the um, uh, most important thing to remember is if workers are working for one municipality and going to the other, um, unless we have some kind of an arrangement, uh, it would be required the old municipality, the old employer to give us the express permission to transfer the information or certificates to the new municipality. That's a basic thing, yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks Adi. Um, so we got some questions here from uh, uh, participants. Um, one person says, I saw a timesheet button. Can the timesheet be customized? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's another feature that we do offer. I didn't go, again, uh, due to time's sake, we couldn't go over all the features, but through a demo, we can show you an example of a timesheet that, and you know, there's a lot of compatibility with other HRIS systems. Um, that's a good point, Adrian. And Nicholas, I'd like to add here that the timesheet um, adds to the HRIS part as well. So if the, you, have, you have the health and safety part of the system, you have the HR elements with the system, but the timesheet brings in the project management part of the system. So each um, employee's um, time can be very easily uh, monitored and what projects they're working on. So it, it's just much more than just a health and safety management system. That's the whole idea. Yeah, we actually, 4S actually uses it for time off as well or we record vacation or, you know, whatever. Uh, we, we use it for that system in-house. In okay, great. Uh, second question, how would we go about taking advantage of the JHSC training part one and two offer? Uh, basically, uh, as you can see on the screen, there's my email address and my phone number. So reach out to me and we'll uh, work to arrange that for you. Great. Um, I guess a question for me, uh, will 4S have a presence at the AMO conference this year? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be there. Um, we've, uh, we're actually just at Roma. Um, some of you may have visited our booth there. And uh, we'll, we'll be at AMO and there could be, other, uh, could be other conferences throughout the year that we'll be attending as well. We, we really do see, like, be a, we really do see our, ser our services and our system to really help out those small to medium sized municipalities. That's, that's why uh, through partnership with AMO, we wanted to work, make this happen today. Great, excellent. I just wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to, to participate on, on the webinar today. And thanks to Adrian, Addy, and the team at 4S for, uh, for giving the presentation. Um, I would encourage everyone to reach out either to myself if you want some specific specific information regarding the AMO 4S partnership. Um, but to reach out to, to Adrian, his contact information is there on the, on the last slide. Uh, if you are interested in scheduling a demo or if you want further specific information regarding 4S and the services and the programs that they, that they offer. Um, so with that, uh, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of your day and uh, we will be in touch uh, soon, I'm sure. Thank you everyone, take care.